right, so welcome. Welcome, thanks for being here today. My name is Paul Ferraro, Vice President of Sea Power Capability Systems uh, here at Raytheon Integrated Defense Systems. Thank you so much for being here today. Special thanks to our elected officials, Senator Reed, Senator Whitehouse, and Congressman Cicilline. I understand how very busy your schedules are, and thank you so much for taking the time to support us and, and, and be, here, uh, be here today. go through today is an overview of, of the new capability here at, at, at Raytheon and Portsmouth. Uh, this represents a significant investment for the company and, and we really feel it represents a true discriminator uh, for us as a company, for our sea power business in particular, um, and here in, in Rhode Island, but perhaps more importantly a capability that allows us to bring truly unique integrated capabilities to our warfighters. That's really what we do here at, at, at Sea Power. We've been in this business for a long, long time. We pride ourselves not only on the individual capabilities and the sensors and effectors that we build, but truly the integrated warfighting capabilities that protect our men and women in uniform. Start. So Sea Power Capability Systems, headquartered here in Portsmouth, Rhode Island, uh, is truly a global company, as is IDS and Raytheon. Based in Portsmouth, we have installations in St. Petersburg, Florida, San Diego, California, uh, Keyport, Washington, Anschutz, Germany, and our radar business, predominantly up in, in uh, Marlboro, Massachusetts, and Andover, Massachusetts. So you can imagine the challenge that we have in integrating the vast capabilities that we have across both sea power, across integrated defense systems, and across Raytheon as a whole. Raytheon, as you may recall, is about 63,000 employees worldwide. Bringing that capability to bear in a network fashion, allowing people to collaborate and truly bring the best of the best is paramount to us meeting the needs of our warfighters both today and tomorrow. This capability represents a major step in that direction. Our ability to integrate end items, many of which you see left and right of me here, from effectors to sensors, sonars, and command and control systems into integrated end-to-end -end systems, absolutely paramount and, and critical to our meeting the demands of our warfighters. So what I'm going to do right now is take you through what you're going to see today, where we are, and, and, and what we've invested in. So what we call the Combat System Integration Lab. Okay. Made up of four entities, a visualization center, which is what we're, where we are today, integration labs that you see on the left and right, and I'll give you a little bit more detail about each, our radar lab, both internal data processing, system integration capability, as well as a, a very unique, tech, unique test capability that we have, we have outside, and our undersea lab, where we not only leverage our proximity to Narragansett Bay, but also our proximity to Newark and other resources in the area. And, and really uh, uh, extending the capability that we have here on the island. Quick story, I'll call it Inside Baseball, on the name Combat System Integration Lab. Where's, where's Carolyn going here? There she is, okay. So Carolyn has infinite patience, and, and one of her jobs is to help us with our communication to make sure that what we're doing is communicating clearly and effectively, and in this case, come up with the names for Combat Integration Lab. So she gathers a few of us around and, and comes up with a whole list of, uh, of options. Um, and I'll say this is a, a great example of the power of diversity, diverse thought, people, and, and, and people looking at things from, from, from different perspectives. So we went through this list of seemingly 30, 40, 50 options. And one of the ones that we focused on fairly quickly was the Combat System Integration Center. Sound appropriate, right? Combat systems or integrating capability. Center, why not center? It's a hub of expertise. Center of Excellence, you can define your own analogy, seem to make sense. Until one of our members of the team, and again speaking to the diversity of thought, mentions, within the defense industry in particular, and or in general, and Raytheon in particular, we tend to shorten things up, put together acronyms that we then use to call our, our, our systems and capabilities what they are. So when we put it from that perspective, and we looked at Combat System Integration Center, CSIC, uh, the name of CSIC, for a maritime or naval capability didn't seem to make the most sense. Uh, you could have conjured up a whole slew of, 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 of images and icons that we could have used. So we rapidly crossed that out and went with CISO, uh, Combat System Integration Lab. So you can imagine the, uh, the patience that, that Carolyn has to drag us through that. But anyway, so let me talk about what it is we have. And you can see overall about 7,000 square feet between our facilities, about an $8.5 million investment 
just here in Portsmouth. And, and it really is testament to the commitment that the company has, the capabilities of the folks here in Rhode Island, leveraging a, a long history uh, of undersea expertise and ship integration expertise, as well as above water expertise. We truly bring uh, uh, capabilities together across all domains, above the water, on the water, and below the water, integrating those together uh, in very unique and compelling ways. This, this also represents about the 10th or 11th, I guess 11th, uh, node within the Raytheon complex. I mentioned Raytheon has about 63,000 employees worldwide. Uh, one of our abilities or, or uh, ways in which we, we bring the uh, diversity of thought and support our engineering team uh, in integrating solutions and collaborating across those entities is to network facilities just like this across uh, our, our domestic locations as well as internationally. This site represents the 11 such locations that allow us to support modeling and simulation, collaborative engineering, uh, design reviews, and collaboration internally. And it's also designed and architected to allow us to extend this capability to our external partners, be it universities, labs, and uh, war fighting centers. Let's start. So the visualization center, where we are right now. We're looking at about 60 some odd seats, thereabouts. You see it lends itself to customer reviews, uh, collaboration with our modeling and systems engineering expertise, interactive design reviews, and uh, uh, bringing expertise from around the company, and uh, as I mentioned, external to, uh, to Raytheon as well. Currently configured in an unclassified environment, lends itself to classified collaboration as well. We have all the, uh, the resources necessary to do that. Critical to our business. Next chart. Integration labs, you see on the left and the right. Uh, where some of our engineers doing work as we speak. You see some of the combat management system interfaces and terminals. We'll be using this to, uh, to bring data from our, our various sensors, be it radar sensors, sonar sensors, overall ship integration capability. And our engineers will be here working in these facilities, displaying some of their work on the, on, on the uh, uh, monitors that you, that you see here, either for the design reviews or collaboration. And you can see with the curtains there, these rooms also lend themselves to a fair amount of extension so we can continue to grow as the business grows and bring in more resources as, as required. Okay. So our radar lab has both an internal component and an external component. The internal component, as you can imagine, is workstations and, and, and computing resources for radar engineers to, to accept data, integrate that data, test it, verify it, and, and further technology and technology development. External to the building, you see a picture over here on, on my left, your right, uh, we've, we've installed a facility that allows us to put some of our most uh, uh, forward-looking radars and radar technologies, specifically the SPY-6 family of radars, which uh, we've uh, been fortunate enough to, contract, to be contracted by the Navy uh, to develop this next-generation S-band radar technology. As it turns out, the Portsmouth location is an ideal location for radar testing, integration testing, both in a, as radars onto itself as, as well as collaboratively working with other locations that we have uh, within the Northeast. Uh, it'll allow us to really further the technology development that we're currently under contract for. Uh, today, ensuring that we maintain a very robust technology roadmap to further this technology as, as threats emerge and, and the need for, for greater uh, capability uh, uh, defines itself, as well as our most advanced technology programs uh, that were contracted for out of the Office of Naval Research through our advanced technology program, we'll be doing much of that testing here as well. So really it'll become a focal point for sensor and radar system in particular, uh, development, integration uh, into overall end-to-end -end solutions with our combat management system expertise, as well as integration with our effectors. And then lastly, Raytheon and Portsmouth has a long heritage of undersea technology. So we'd be remiss if we didn't move, uh, if we didn't leverage to its fullest extent that expertise, that capability and technology, our proximity to, our proximity to the Narragansett Bay, uh, as well as the, the great capability that the warfare, warfare centers have undersea, extending that capability right out our door here, allowing us to test and verify systems uh, as we develop them, as we uh, uh, define new technologies, take those data sets that we gather out in, in the Bay, internally here, process that data, further the development of technology and systems, and ultimately integrate it to end-to-end -end more fighting capability. So we'll be doing that in earnest with, with our MSC lab. So really, the, the motivation
motivation behind doing this, I think, is clear. Enhancing collaboration, both internally, across 63,000 Raytheon employees, allowing us to extend that capability to the warfare centers and, and the universities and the labs, and really developing the most integrated and compelling solutions that we can and that our warfighters more than deserve. And then lastly, I mentioned that this is the 11th site within Raytheon that will be networked in both an unclassified and classified manner. The predominance of those sites are domestic, but you can see we also have two sites uh, internationally. Um, and, and really allowing us to perform design reviews efficiently, effectively, bring, bringing diverse teams together, sharing those ideas, everything from human machine interface, uh, maintenance procedures, overall ergonomic layouts, um, it, it, as well as integration of our integration of our sensors and systems on platforms, uh, be it ship-based, land-based, or or undersea. Okay, so I'm going to give an example now of how we're networked our capabilities to our to our, uh, uh, our to our location up in Andover, Massachusetts. We have one of our engineers showing live on on screen here. We're going to show that. <laughs> We're going to show some of our ability to interact live with what, what she's seeing, what she's working on here, what we can see here, and you can imagine how we might extend that capability to design teams on both ends uh, and work collaboratively across multiple locations. So this is a point to point or one site to another site uh, situation or example. This also lends itself to extend into multiple sites simultaneously as well. So over to you. Good morning. Um, I'm Vanessa Peterson, so I'm the operations lead here in Andover. Um, what we'll show you today is our collaboration, um, one of our collaboration solutions, um, so that I may be representing a team here, um, an engineer here who might be doing a red line, for example. Um, so I have a tablet here um, which enables me um, to, for instance, live time red line. Here I'll add some circles so we can see to the center screen. I'll start zooming in a little bit here on the drawing. We may be looking at facts in our counts um, and to kind of project a visual to help you understand maybe what I'm redlining. Um, here I can manipulate the drawing. Um, we can zoom into our notes. Perhaps we're crossing some off. Um, but here, just representative of how you can see we connect the two sites. That's great. Thanks, Vanessa. Uh -huh. So I don't know about all of you, but I, I, I'm apparently operating in, in perhaps a different yet antiquated way. Uh, I tend to print things out, put them on my desk, get crayons and markers, and, and, and mark them up. Um, this makes much more sense to our, our engineers and workforce today. Operate much more efficiently, much more effectively. Uh, these two young gentlemen that are, that are here in the front uh, row running everything that we're seeing today started the company less than three months ago and started on this project supporting Tim a week, two weeks ago. They're about, and apparently it's second nature to them because it all seems to be working so far. <laughs> <laughs> they also have beads of sweat on their brow right now. But that aside, it's the way that our workforce works and, and, and providing the tools and resources to allow our workforce to operate in a way that's meaningful to them, that makes sense, and allows them to be creative, collaborative, and efficient. It's absolutely worth its weight in gold when it comes to delivering compelling war fighting capability. So here's an example of, of a system that many of you may uh, be familiar with. Uh, it's the Rhode Island Common Operating Picture. This was fielded back when Representative Cicilline was Mayor Cicilline, okay, um, back some number of, uh, of years ago, uh, and then was handed over to the Rhode Island Emergency Management Agency under the leadership of Pete Gaynor. Pete, where are we? There you are. Um, it's an outstanding example of how a number of disparate data sources can be brought together in a meaningful way, displayed in a collaborative way, if not fused, and, and, and information leveraged from one source to another to truly deliver information, turning data into information and really providing a compelling uh, visual for the operators that need this data, that need this data to facilitate their decision making. And you can imagine in, in, in crisis mode how critical this becomes to have real-time access to data displayed in a way that is meaningful, is collaborative, and allows our individuals or the operators to make the most use of the various data sets that are, uh, that are available. I think I'd be remiss, Peter, if I didn't congratulate you again on your recent appointment to the uh, uh, Deputy Director of the uh, uh, Federal Emergency Management 
agency, and, and uh, certainly if we can provide this capability or any others, uh, please let me know. <laughs> <laughs> it is a compelling capability. I'm making a note right now. <laughs> okay. So here's an example of, of how we use the 3D visualization. Now this happens to be a 2D rendering of, a, of what could be presented in a 3D way. But these are true drawings of the various vessels and the systems going on these vessels. We've ingested this data, uh, 2D data, from the uh, actual design drawings. It lends itself to both overall visualization at the platform level, and then if we're so inclined, we can zoom right into the beautiful radar, for instance, right there. It's called the Spy 6 and the Flight Fleet 3 d g and really get into how is that radar integrated into the deck house? How are the sailors going to service that radar? You know, do we have clearance issues? Do we not have clearance issues? These are, it, it is absolutely invaluable, and, and, and I'll use the word eye-watering, when you see the level of detail uh, that these systems and, and this type of rendering provide. We'll bring in maintenance technicians and logisticians to see how uh, replaceable units are pulled and, 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 uh, and replaced, make sure there's no clearance issues, and really effectively do walkthroughs of each one of these vessels. Here's the CBN 78. We've been fortunate enough to be contracted for a number of major systems on that platform to include the radar, the CDC, and the SSDS capability, the uh, combat management system. Having this capability when we embarked on this program would have been absolutely invaluable. So the motivation behind a facility like this, quite frankly, is somewhat grounded in the CBN 78 program and other programs like it, where we did a lot of this integration and engineering on board the vessel itself. Really not the ideal environment for our engineers, not the ideal environment for the shipbuilders and folks, and folks that have, quite frankly, other things to worry about on, on board. We can have a land-based capability here, bring our engineers together in a controlled environment, do the work that's necessary to ensure that these systems integrate properly and efficiently, and then bring it on board the platform, integrate it in a much more effective and efficient way, while maintaining the resources here to support this system for its lifetime upwards of 20, 30 years. Next chart. We've also used this capability to do our own facility design layout. You can imagine. How, how complex a, a layout like this is. This is Here's a rendering of what we call a radar development facility. We recently opened up in Andover, Massachusetts. This is the automated facility that will be used to populate what's shown here on, on, on my right, your left, the SPY-6 radar. Fully automated uh, uh, robotic assembly of this uh, next generation radar. Um, the design of this facility itself, again, no small task to get it right and ensure that ergonomically the material flows properly, the engineers and the technicians have access to the assembly uh, uh, elements that they need. All of this was done with this type of environment, this type of rendering, and allowed us to work through various scenarios of how the system and how the facility will operate in practice. So I mentioned that, that Raytheon and, and, and Sea Power in particular is, is focused on providing end-to-end -end capabilities. We develop absolutely eye-watering sensors, command and control systems, and effectors. What's shown over here is the airborne low-frequency sonar used for detection, classification, and tracking of submarines. And what's over here in the right is a rendering of one of our torpedo systems. The demonstration I'm going to show you in a second is a Mark 54 torpedo. Collectively between these systems, between the sensor, the command and control system, and the effector, integrated together in a compelling way, provides an unprecedented warfighting capability that we owe our sailors and that we're very proud to provide. So I'm going to show you a quick video of an example of how these things come together. I will warn you, however, uh, I've been told from some of our submariners in the room that this is uh, a little disturbing. I, I, I just one disclaimer that no submarines were actually hurt in the making of, of this video. <laughs>
Um, if there are no questions, I'd like to take the opportunity to invite our elected officials up to say a few words. Uh, I'd like to start with Senator Reed. Senator Reed is a ranking member of the Senate Armed Services Committee, senior member of the Senate Appropriations Committee. Well, thank you very much, Paul. Uh, I want to recognize, obviously, my colleagues in the White House. do all we can to assist the extraordinary efforts that we can make the around the course of the world. I too want to recognize uh, Senator Obama and Representative Bowie, thank you, uh, for your great work. And Peter Gaynor, who is leaving us, Peter, um, <laughs> but fortunately going to be the second in command of FEMA, and I have great confidence in what you're going to do. Uh, this is a exciting moment as we inaugurate the uh, Trump integration facility here at Raytheon. Raytheon has been part of our defense complex in Rhode Island for 60 years, uh, an essential part. And they are doing, you are doing, I should say, so much in terms of providing the U.S. Armed Forces with the ability to uh, not only survive, but to prevail. Uh, the spy six radar system has been critical going forward to defense of the ships in involving the threat environment. Just one of many. We're delighted that there are a thousand Rhinos working here. Uh, if we this. Uh, <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, but this lab is very, very impressive on many dimensions. First of all, it's the latest technology. I'm glad these young men are running it because I would still be trying to get it kind of fired up with how it's And then, uh, two, it is going to give us an edge in a world which is much more complicated. The threat is better, more significant, it's evolving quickly. We have to be able to collaborate, not just within the company, but the company and Newark, the company and other companies, and not just nationally, but internationally. And this facility will give you that edge. The other factor is going to be very important, too, is that one of the major challenges we have today is not just providing the best equipment, but lowering the risk in the development phase and lowering the force overall. You can do that too by this coordination and collaboration and cooperation. And again, let me thank you for that. Thank you, one other thing, for your great role helping other companies in the United States, India and other organizations. Uh, Tim Nelson is here. Tim played a great role in making sure that Raytheon is a, not only playing its weight, but more than its weight when it comes to supporting the local economy. Senator Whitehouse. Senator Whitehouse serves on the Budget Committee, Finance Committee, and the Judiciary Committee. Senator? Thank you, Paul. Thank you, thank you all for having us, and thank you for what you are doing here. I want to uh, join my senior Senator Jack Reed and my appreciation to Kathy and Lou, who is Somewhere here, oh, there he is, Kathy and Lou, for their uh, public service. Wish Pete well in his uh, confirmation. Everything looks to go smoothly and swimmingly, which is about as good as you can get. Uh, confirmation is never a pleasant uh, experience, but I think he's going to have about as good as the uh, experience offers. And also to join Jack in uh, recognizing uh, Timmy Del Judas, who has done wonderful, wonderful work both within our delegation, but also engaging with our delegation here. So. Thank you uh, very, very much. Um, thank you for the jobs that you bring to Portsmouth, to Quidnick Island, and to Rhode Island. The defense sector is extraordinarily important to us and much appreciated. And of course, the quality of what you do is uh, an enormous asset for the young men and women who go in harm's way for all of us and uh, make sure that they have the very best equipment, the very best support, and uh, are put into the most advantageous position that they can is a very important part of our whole national security posture. And so what you do is much appreciated in that regard. Uh, locally, I want to join Jack in thanking you for your support for Cinedia, and particularly Cinedia Innovation <coughs> Days coming up, which is a terrific thing, and specifically Antex, the uh, Naval Undersea Technology uh, Fair, which I don't think, uh, well, we're, it's never going to be the Paris Air Show, <laughs> but it could be 
really cool. We want to continue to grow that as a terrific asset for uh, Equipment Island and make sure that that gets onto the schedule of uh, lots more people. We have a lot of hospitality we can offer here, and uh, the expertise on undersea remote vehicles is really pretty terrific. So uh, let me close by particularly thanking Jack Reed, our senior senator. Uh, he and Jim Langevin are on the appropriate on the uh, Armed Services Committees in the Senate and in the House. Um, Jack is the ranking member. He's our top uh, Democrat on that committee. He's been working uh, very closely with Senator McCain and I think everybody involved in our nation's defense field. Senator McCain's loss it is a loss for all Americans, not just for those who love John. Uh, and his work uh, as the ranking member on Armed Services is really powerful and important for all of his programs. And then, of course, he's a cardinal on the uh, Appropriations Committee, something that we have not had <coughs> until back to John O. Pastore. And uh, so Jack's leading voice on the Appropriations to support all of this is super important. So while he is always very kind about saying how we work together as a team, there is clearly somebody on point on that team. And uh, it is Jack. So, Jack, much appreciation to you for all your great work. <laughs> Congressman Cicilline. Congressman Cicilline serves on the House Foreign Affairs Committee and the House Judiciary Committee. Congressman. Thanks, Paul. I'm on the committee that, that does the diplomatic work, so this capability will never have to be used. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I'm really thrilled to be here and, of course, want to acknowledge my two senators uh, and particularly acknowledge the great leadership of Senator Lee, who is such a voice for our national defense in Washington, for our country, and uh, Senator West's role in the Finance Committee to do the same. And I know Congressman Langevin uh, would have loved that video too. Uh, <laughs> and uh, obviously a big champion for armed services. It's great to meet Representative Fogarty and Senator Palma. Uh, but mostly I want to say congratulations to Raytheon. Uh, this is an extraordinary facility. Uh, I know you have over a thousand people here and that you're going to add another 150, uh, which is great because our focus is how we help to grow good paying jobs in our state. We're showing you doing our part. Uh, but in addition to creating good paying jobs, you're contributing significantly to our national defense, and this new lab will advance that as well. And I also want to say, in kind of honoring the young people that you've identified, that uh, thank you to Raytheon for the work that you do, uh, sort of educating the next generation of warfighters and engineers and uh, young people. And you have a very robust program in the schools uh, that supports STEM education. Thank you for doing that. Uh, thank you for the extraordinary work of Tim Joe Judas. It's been great to work with him. Uh, but congratulations on the great lab that's going to make a real difference in this company and a tremendous difference in the security and safety of our country. Thank you. Senators and Congressmen up for the ribbon cutting. Yes, for the official opening of our CSIL. Not CSIC. Not CSIC. 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 Stay cool outside. It's a little bit warmer than we anticipated. Thank you.